the day of the funeral. And what was the weather like outside? And now I want you to draw a picture. We'll hand out some paper. And I want you to draw a picture about the weather inside. What did the weather feel like inside? It's a picture of a um, storm with uh, thunder. And uh, because my dad died, I was really, really sad. So. funeral was probably one of the worst days of my life and it was just a miser miserable day the house is just like it's just there because it's like our house being like dumped on mm. I drew the clouds because like I was feeling sad and stuff and for like kind of a sort of mad good feeling and then I drew lightning because I was really mad. And then I drew some like raindrops because I was feeling sad and they're like, they like sort of represent teardrops and then there's just water on the grass. And then it was a shock to me. And is that you there in the corner and your hair is standing on end? Because I, I was touching the metal when I put it in because it was a shock. If you're an adult and you have a fairly well-developed ego and sense of self, then you have some buffers in terms of dealing with trauma. You have some coping strategies. And often uh, for children, they don't have those as available. They don't, uh, they don't have those um, capacities. And um, in many ways, it can be more devastating for a child. What are some of the different feelings that you have felt either at the time or since? Sean? Sad. Sad, okay. What else? Angry. Angry. Surprised. In what way surprised? Like, like kind of, because you never thought that it would happen to somebody mm -hmm. that you know, so you, like, when that happens, you're surprised because you never thought anything like that would really happen. Right. Sometimes you feel ignored. Or sometimes, even you feel like that, like, what's going to happen? What do you think is going to happen without that person? Is that like worried? Yeah. Maybe? I want you to select a word and write the word on the line. So let's say you might feel mad. And then you choose a color to go with mad. So mad might be, I don't know, red or black, whatever. You choose as many as you want. If you want more than what's here, then you can add some more. And when you're finished that, I then want you to color in the circle to match the feelings that you feel. So if you feel a lot of mad, then you might color in a lot of the color that you chose for mad. When anybody draws, including children, if an adult interprets, it says more about the adult than it does the child because, say, for example, for me, black is depression. And I look at somebody's drawing and I say, oh, gee, they're depressed because they used a lot of black. That's not, I don't think that's an okay interpretation because um, for that child or for the adult or for whoever, black may be calmness, it may be peacefulness, it may be the unknown. It may, they may have a totally different association. It may remind them of something that's quite different than depression. So uh, it's very important to get the child's um, interpretation of that color. The blue is mad, uh, yellow is angry, black is shocked, and red is wounded. Red is wounded. Wounded, uh-huh. Hmm. Can you say anything about that wounded feeling? Well, like, it just hurt me, because, like, I lost somebody that was important in my life. Hmm. The blue is angry, the green is weird, the red is sad, and the orange is guilty, and the yellow is irresponsible. Mm -hmm. So you've got a lot of angry, right? Can you, can you say anything about the irresponsible? What, do that, what does that mean to you? Like, I, I, I could have maybe stopped what happened. Uh-huh. I, I sort of feel guilty because... 
I'm the one who chose to sit at the back of the ride. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Anyone have any suggestions to help Kevin with this feeling? Uh -huh. Maybe he was just the wrong place at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. Maybe that would have happened anyway. Like your mom or somebody was suggested to go to the back uh -huh. or something. But you can't blame yourself for doing really not too much, really. Somebody would have sat in the back anyway, so either way, somebody would have, would have made, probably got killed. So I, so I, I agree with him, and I think you're just at the wrong place at the wrong time. I don't feel that society prepares you for death. I think it's something that you, you have to do a conscious effort. You have to really think hard about it and uh, prepare yourself for it, whatever way that that means to you. We all had an undercurrent of anger of having been left, being left behind. But I, I tend to tackle problems head on. In difficult situations, the boys, they went into a big withdrawal denial about it. They didn't want to talk about it. They didn't want to go to the cemetery. They didn't want to share it with their friends. They went about their day-to-day -day lives as best they possibly could, playing and seeing their friends and doing everything they normally do. As adults, we can distinguish between intellectually understanding that we haven't been abandoned and what our heart is telling us, which is this sense and feeling of abandonment. Whereas for children, sometimes that difference between what we know and what we feel is not so different, so that children often have a sense of abandonment. And for most children, when somebody dies, it's the first time that, that they felt this this kind of feeling of abandonment and so there's a fear that other people will also abandon them uh, that's particularly I think poignant when a parent dies that the other parent uh, may also abandon me maybe not through their choice but I'll also lose them are you more worried about your mom than you used to be oh yeah I'm not. what do you mean um I remember one night she was on the phone and with the doctors and it was it was a little operation she was talking about and she she, she i don't know what happened like because it was at night and it just gets scary when the doctor calls at night and i started to cry and i thought oh my gosh so and so my brother and i started to cry and we but we didn't know what's going on and my mom got off the phone and goes what are you guys crying about and I, and then we go well, I thought you were crying. I thought something really bad was going to happen to you. And she, she said, no, it's just sometimes scary getting a call from the doctors at night. And there's nothing to worry about. I just might have to have a little operation, nothing big at all. When Larry was dying, we, we had spent a great deal of time talking about the kind of things the boys would eventually go through after his death. And we tried to do some work ahead of time to prepare them for it. And uh, a couple of days before their father died, he called them in and he talked to them and he told them, he said to them, with me there, that someday, Um, he said that someday your mother will meet someone and life is for the living and it needs to go forward, but that I will always be your father and I hope that this new man that she meets, that you will learn to love him and care for him a lot. So it paved the way and it gave the kids permission to get on with that part of their life. 
I'm glad my mom has moved on to somebody else that she cares about because I know that's the way my dad would have wanted it. I know he would he would have wanted us to move on with our life and not always feel sorry for ourselves and I just know he would have wanted us to move on with our life rather than just stay at the one spot that we were. that my mom has found someone and if he hadn't have taken us in and told us that I think I'd be feeling I wouldn't know what to do right now I don't know what to feel psychological time is different than chronological time and what I mean by that is often I have parents saying I'm really concerned about my child there's been a death in the family but my child seems to be reacting normally He's not complaining. He says everything's fine. His teachers say everything's fine. He's not showing any symptoms of stress. Um, and I say that psychologically, he's obviously not ready to deal with this, with the grief. It may be that he's still in shock or denial, or it may be that it's gone what I call underground, and it may resurface at a later point in his life. But that does suggest that when he's ready, that there is some work to be done. I, I can remember going to the cemetery and it just being packed. There's, there had to be about a mile full of cars just behind everyone. Um, I, I remember when the casket was shut, I started to cry. And you hadn't cried up until then? Yeah, I had. Mm -hmm. And then my mom, my brother and I, we went up to say a prayer. And. After the funeral service, every, everybody was very sad. And my mom and my, my brother and I, went home and just, I, I couldn't believe what happened. Because I never thought that something like that could happen to me. There is resolution of certain feelings or issues around grief and loss. Okay. What happens is that if an individual has the opportunity to get that out and, and, they're, and they can hear themselves or they can feel it in their body or they can have somebody witness it, what happens is when issues around the grief or loss come up again, they're felt less intensely. Whereas if it's always inside, the intensity will increase. You see, when a child begins to grieve, it marks the beginning of dealing with a trauma. And although the grief may be re-experienced at every stage of development, if grief is not suppressed, it can be experienced in a healthy way. Darkness.